The M4 iMac is Apple's only all-in-one desktop. It remains as iconic as ever, and it's an affordable bargain if you choose carefully. Hi, I'm David, and this is The Talking Tech, and all we talk about here is Apple. Now, the iMac has always been one of Apple's best-loved Macs for very good reason. It's a lovely Mac to use. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to buy the best possible M4 iMac, but we're spending the least amount of money. The iMac has kind of got a mass appeal to it. It's got a pop star quality to it. If you are somebody that's not really into Mac to describe to you an iMac or what's in their mind's eye, I bet you it's going to be an iMac. And things got even better for iMac last year when M4 Apple Silicon came to them. They're even quicker and more performant than they've ever been. And it's important to remember that every Mac in Apple's lineup is there for a reason. From the mighty Mac Pro down to the cheapest Mac Mini, Every Mac is important to Apple in the lineup and it's there for a very particular reason. And that is true with the iMac. So out of all of the Macs that you've got to choose from, why buy an iMac? There are several reasons. And one of the main reasons to be very near the top of the list will probably be familiarity. For many of us, an iMac was the first time that we used a Mac. So it's kind of in our DNA, it's in our makeup. We feel like it's going home. It's like a comfortable pair of slippers. Sitting down in front of an iMac just somehow feels right. The design is still lovely now. Yes, it's contemporary. Yes, it's a twist on the original iMac, but it still kind of looks like an iMac. And also, it's the easiest Mac to set up. Out of any of the Macs, it's the easiest Mac to set up because it's out of the box and within an hour, you can be online. And it's also a really affordable Mac. That is if you know which boxes to tick when you're buying it. I'm not really a fan of the base level M4 iMac. And I'm gonna show you why by comparing it to the base level M4 Mac Mini. The M4 Mac Mini starts at £600, and for that £600, you get three Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB-C ports, and a Giganet Ethernet port. On the iMac, though, you only get two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, and if you want that Ethernet port, that's an extra £30. Now, just to make things a little bit more level, if we throw on the keyboard that comes with the iMac, which is £99, and the mouse, which is £79, your M4 Mac Mini is going to cost £777, which is £522 less than the base iMac. But of course, for that 500 pounds, you've got to try and find a display. Now, if you can find me the display that is a 24 inch 4.5K retina display that's the equal of the iMac, I'll be amazed. They are hard to come by. But there's another detail you need to be aware of with that base level M4 iMac that I'm not keen about, and it's the M4 chip that's inside it. As good as it is, it is the most basic M4 Apple Silicon chip you can get with an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU. But it is that display that keeps bringing us back to iMacs. I loved it on my first iMac and I still love it now. It's that 4.5K retina display that I mentioned with a 4,480 by 2,520 resolution at 218 pixels per inch. And it is as gorgeous now as ever. And I know there's gonna be comments coming in about I'd love a large iMac, but I honestly don't think we're gonna see a 27 inch iMac anytime soon. And yes, it would look amazing in black, but I just don't think it's happening. So let's look at what we can actually buy and how we can get you the best iMac for as little money as possible. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, a sub really does make a difference. It helps hugely. So enjoying this video, enjoy my other videos, sub, and also maybe turn on notifications so when I upload, you're one of the first to know. So yes, hands up, I did buy the cheapest iMac possible, but it's not a Mac I would suggest that you buy, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But it does serve a purpose. Remember I said that every Mac is in Apple's lineup for a reason. This has got a really attractive price point to it, and it means that they can attract new people from PC over to Mac, get used to working on Mac, Mac OS, and into the Apple ecosystem. Now, for me, I'm lucky. If I've got more taxing work, I can come off of the iMac, and I can go and work on my M4 Pro Mac Mini, my M1 Max MacBook Pro, or even my 13-inch M4 iPad Pro. I've got plenty of options. But if this was the only iMac you're buying, don't buy that entry level. Honestly, don't buy it. Walk away from it. What's wrong with it? Well, quite a lot. Memory, I.O. and storage. Convenience is a massive thing when it comes to the iMac. That whole idea of just lifting it out the box, one and done, up online quickly, and of course it being gorgeous. They are huge factors that go towards wanting to buy an iMac. But if you want your iMac to say last three, five or 10 years, then there are a few important tick boxes you need to bear in mind as you're checking out. Now, if we look at the configuration of the iMac, if you go over to Apple's website, it looks like there's three tiers, but there's really not. Forgetting that base level, and I wish we could, forget that base level entry iMac, if you look at the 
1500 pounds model and the 1700 pounds model, the only difference I can see in there is that you're spending 200 pounds to get 250 gigs of SSD storage. And that's not very good value for money, which we'll come back to a little bit later on. But if we look at the mid price, that 1500 pound iMac, I think that's a really good starting point at which you can build yourself an iMac that's gonna last into the future. You get four Thunderbolt, four ports, and you get the ethernet port, and you can run more external displays as well. On that mid price iMac, you can run up to two external displays with up to 6K resolution at 60 Hertz, or one external display, with an 8K resolution at 60 Hertz. And on the base level, you can only run one external display with a 6K resolution at 60 Hertz. Now, we've got this 200 pounds difference, if you recall, between the 1500 pound model and the 1700 pound model. Do not put that into SSD storage. We will be coming back to it, I promise you, but do not put that into storage, put it in to memory. Now, if you're wondering how much memory you really need, and you've got a Mac at the moment, open your activity monitor, click on memory, and down the bottom, you'll see physical memory used. That's a really good starting point. Look at that as a guide, and obviously give yourself some headroom over and above that. Apple Silicon is really efficient at the way it uses memory. So I think you'll be surprised how little you can get away with, but just bear that in mind when you're specking your Mac up. And memory, of course, will make your Mac feel really fast, real snappy, really quick for years and years to come. And if we put the storage to one side, there are only two other options that you need to make at checkout with your iMac. Nano texture. Do you need the nano texture display? And I can save you some money there as well. With the iMac, unlike say with a MacBook Pro where that you might be using in all sorts of different conditions and lighting conditions which you can't control. With the iMac, I would imagine you're putting that in one place in your home or in your office and you know where it's gonna sit. So just check the display out before you buy at different times of day. Is there a reflection that bounces off a window outside at a certain time of day? Does the sun come in the window at a certain point of the day which makes it almost impossible to work on? Are there bright lights above you that you can't possibly avoid? If that's the case, the 200 pounds on the nano texture would be a good choice. I had it briefly on my 13 inch iPad Pro last year and it really does work, but just consider carefully before springing up that extra 200 pounds, it might be money you don't need to spend. And the only other option you've got is on the keyboard, whether you want Touch ID on the keyboard. It's another 30 pounds, but I'm guessing you might well have an Apple Watch. And if you do, why don't you configure the iMac to unlock with the Apple Watch and save yourself that 30 pounds? That's certainly what I do. So now let's begin looking at storage and seeing how we can configure this Mac to save you the most money, but give you the best iMac possible. For the longest while now, I've always said, buy as much Apple SSD storage as you possibly can. It's the most convenient and it's the quickest, but times they are changing. Now, convenience we don't really have to worry about. It's not like this is a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro where having SSD storage connected to it might be a hindrance. This is a desktop, so convenience isn't really an issue. And if we look at speeds, things are changing. Now, I can't help but think that Apple has shot itself in the foot here by offering us such ridiculously quick Thunderbolt ports. On the M4 Pro Mac Mini that I've got, I've got Thunderbolt 5 ports. Now, Thunderbolt 5 is still quite expensive. The enclosures are expensive for it. Even the cables are quite expensive for it. But of course, the iMac hasn't got Thunderbolt 5, and that's perfect because we're trying to look to buy and spec this iMac up on somewhat of a budget. It's Thunderbolt 4 on the iMac, and those enclosures are really, really affordable. Now, for the last week or so, I've been trying this to case this M.2 NVMe TBU 405 Pro M1 enclosure. Inside of it, I've put two terabytes of Samsung SSD. I bought the 990 Evo Pro Plus storage, and I've been really, really pleased with how it's been working. And just to give you an idea of prices, that's a really important part here, because we're trying to build this on a budget. The enclosure itself cost about 100 pounds, and the memory cost about 140 pounds. That's 240 pounds I've spent for two terabytes of meaningful, useful, usable, workable SSD storage. It's every bit as quick as the storage that comes on your Mac. It's a massive saving. Now, to give you an idea, if you jump from 256 gigs that comes as standard on that 1500 pound iMac and spec that up with two terabytes of Apple storage, that would have cost you 800 pounds more. And the shocking stories go on. I've just replaced the two terabytes that I had in my enclosure on the M4 Pro Mac Mini with four terabytes. That's how much I rate these things. Now, it's cost me 300 pounds. It arrived just before I recorded this, but I rate them that much. I know it's money well spent. And to give you an idea, on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, if I'd looked to get four terabytes of Apple SSD, rather than the 300 pounds I spent today, that would have cost me 
1,200 pounds. There are massive, massive savings to be made. Now, apparently there have been some issues with some external SSDs disconnecting from the Thunderbolt 5 ports on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, but I've not, I've not had that problem for starters, and equally I've not heard any issues with the Thunderbolt 4 ports on iMac and SSDs disconnecting. So I think we're safe on that. They are really usable and really, really quick as well. Now, this isn't a paid for video. Acasis did send me these enclosures, but I'm simply telling you how I found them to use and how I found them to set up. And that's what we're going to look at next, how easy they are to set up. Now, if this is the first external SSD that you've bought, when you get it out of the box and put it into that enclosure and connect it up, you're going to get a message on screen saying disk not readable. I promise you it's not an issue. All you need to do is go to disk utility, click on erase and format and from the drop down, pick on the Apple file system or the APFS. It's journal, it's efficient and it's designed for modern SSDs. If you're going to need to use your SSD on Windows and Macs, Rather than APFS, click on the XFAT format instead. Now let's look at speeds because that is really important here. These numbers mean something. I'm going to use a disk speed test because I think the numbers actually mean something. On the iMac, I was getting speeds of 1,975 write and 2,795 read. On the Acasis TBU 405 enclosure with the Samsung 990 Evo Pro SSD inside it, I was getting speeds of 2,750 write and 2,850 reads. So as you can see, the speeds are not only comparable with Apple's SSD, but fractionally faster. So this proves what I've been saying through this video, that you can spend way less than Apple is charging for their storage, but still end up with a fast, usable, future-proofed M4 iMac. And as I mentioned, being a desktop, once you've got your SSD inside the enclosure, you won't need to see it again for months or even years, so you can hide it somewhere out of sight. It's really expandable. If you find that you're running out of SSD storage, you can just pull the top off and put some more SSD storage in and you are away. And also, there's no confusing buttons. You've got one extra button on here, which is for fan. If you need to use a fan to cool it down, I haven't needed to use that in the two weeks I've been using it. And it can store, or you can put into it, up to eight terabytes of SSD storage. Honestly, this thing is gonna see you through into the future. It's quiet, discreet, quick, and affordable. It's sleek, stylish, and well-made. We could be talking about the iMac, but I'm actually talking about this enclosure. Honestly, I've only just started to use these external SSDs, but they are a game changer and a real lifesaver as well. Now, if you choose really carefully, you can put together an iMac. There's gonna be a fraction of what it could have cost if you bought it direct from Apple. And it'll be an iMac that you can use for anything. It's not just a pretty face. You can use it for video editing, music editing, photo editing, Photoshop, Lightroom. It's a really great iMac that's gonna see you years and years into the future. Using the hacks that I've shown you is hopefully gonna save you some money and hopefully will help you buy the iMac that is gonna be the best iMac you can get for the least money possible. If you've enjoyed this video about an iMac, there's another video on the screen right now where we talk more about IMAX.